Donald Trump beating the war drum, banging on the war drum, boom, 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 banging on the war drum. And I ran, I ran so far away. Remember that shit? So is, is Donald Trump, is the president of the United States banging on the war drum with Iran? There's a rumor now that 120 troops have lined the, are, are ready and ready to go into action against Iran. Right? That was the rumor. Uh, who even knows anymore? We don't even fucking know, man. We're just like, we're like, we don't even know what's going on anymore, right? Like, so they just do shit. They do shit behind our back. So, so it, it is true that uh, I'll play a good video. Trump just went on Fox and gave his view to the people about what he thinks of Iran, which is kind of interesting. Let's look at, uh, but this is what he said. This is what he said um, yesterday. If Iran wants to fight, that will be the official end of Iran. Never threaten the United States of America. Again, so that's a threat, right? He's threatening, why, where, did, where did Iran threaten the United States? Right? Here's, here's, here's again flexing the muscles. Come on, man. come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Come on, baby, come on, baby. It's not working. Anyway, he says something over there that's kind of stupid. But here's here he is. Oh, kissing. Uh, so allegedly a bomb. Is that what it was? Yeah. So, yeah, Donald Trump uh, issued a strong warning to Iran early Monday saying that it would face its official end. I just read you the tweet, right? Never again threaten the United States, said Trump in a tweet shortly after a rocket landed near the U.S. embassy in Baghdad, Iraq overnight. Trump's comment came after he seemingly <clears throat> sought to soften his tone on Iran in recent days following heightened tension sparked by a sudden deployment of U.S. bombers in an aircraft carrier to the Persian Gulf over, quote, unspecific threats. Uh, Iraq's military said the, uh, a rocket that landed in Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone less than a mile from a U.S. embassy caused no injuries was believed to have been fired from East Baghdad. The area uh, is home to Iran Shiite m m militia. Yeah, all right. So who knows who shot the thing, right? You're going to war. You're getting ready to bang the war drum because it's all about Israel. It's, it's Israel. Here's the Jerusalem Post reporting. Right? They love fucking Trump. Trump is kissing up with the, with the, the king of uh, king of uh, Alibaba, king of uh, Arabia, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Right and uh, and then Netanyahu, Bibi, Bibi Netanyahu. Right, he loves these. He loves these guys. Uh, Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states have agreed to a request for a renewed deployment of U.S. forces to deter Iran. Deter them from what? Deter them from what? Developing wet warheads. All right. Well, let's see. According to the um, according to the report, deployment comes as part of a cooperative agreement between. Washington and Saudi in Arabia Gulf states and would take place both at sea and on land. Saudi sources told the newspaper that the agreement was aimed at deterring Iran from a military escalation, including attacking American targets, and, and not with the aim of entering into war. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Let's see what this guy's got to say. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khan. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Akahaki Ali According to a report by Reuters, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei claimed that economic pressure placed on Iran by the United States is intended to turn Iranians against the government. On Saturday, as Iran is likely to face reimposed U.S. sanctions, Khamenei said they bring to bear economic pressure to separate the nation from the system. But six U.S. presidents before him tried this and had to give up. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it is. So, so, so the Iranians, they're not doing anything. They're not doing jack shit, right? So here's Trump in the, in the Rose Garden. Let's move on to another hot spot, Iran, right. Middle East. Right. Tell, tell us what's, what your analysis is of what's going on right now. Well, look, Iran's been a problem for so many years. If you go back, just take a look at all of the conflict that they've caused. And 
the deal that- when when do when do people that support Trump when do they finally realize that he speaks in riddles and he gives no specifics whatsoever? Now I know you guys think that it's 4D chess, it's very sophisticated, that he doesn't give away any details, but the the reality is he really doesn't know anything. That's what it, it appears when he when he says it. He just talks in 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 um in you know it's just uh it's very generalization. When well, give us some specifics, right? Just give us something, something to bite into. Mr. Right. Middle East. Right. Tell, tell us what's, what your analysis is of what's going on right now. Well, look, Iran's been a problem for so many years. If you go back... How many years? Just take a look at all of the conflict that they've caused. What conflict? Tell, tell us about it. And the deal that President Obama made was a horror show. The what, what deal? What horror show? The Iran nuclear deal. Because basically it says that in five years from now, they're going to have an open path to making nuclear weapons. We don't need another... That's, that's simply not true country with that and frankly especially them we don't need it so he made this terrible deal paid 150 mm -hmm. billion dollars paid 1.8 billion in cash that means cash like i mean out of your pocket cash green nobody's ever heard of a thing like that i don't know if you've ever seen at a casino promotion a million dollars and hundred dollar bills it's a lot of area what's a billion eight like so he paid all of this money made a terrible deal. We don't have good inspection rights. We're not even allowed to, we weren't even allowed to inspect some of the most important sites like military mm -hmm. bases, certain things where they would do it. Okay. The deal was terrible. When I first came to office, one of the first meetings I had was at the Pentagon with generals. The, this, is, this is interesting what he's going to say, but the, the, the interesting part of it is that the deal is that you can't have, that you don't have the right to do what we do which is possess and sell and buy uh, nuclear weapons. We sell them, we make them, we sell them. We give them to anybody we want. But, you know, and, and you can't have it. That's the deal. And if you don't like that deal, then we don't have a deal. That's the deals we make. In the office, one of the first meetings I had was at the Pentagon with generals. And they were showing me the Middle East. And they had 14 or 15 sites where there was nothing but war, problems. Every single one of those sites was instigated by Iran. I would love to see evidence of that. Every single one of the, so you got a bunch of generals, you first day in office, a bunch of generals say, oh, Iran, Iran's a problem. The deep state. Uh, oh, Iran, got to get into Iran. Oh yeah, there's a problem with Iran. Uh, that's, that's, come on, come on. The president got gaslighted from the, from the moment he got in there. So it sounds like to me. It was Iran military, it was people paid by Iran. It was just, you have no idea. It was just, I said, this is terrible. They were so strong. I ended the Iran nuclear deal. And it's interesting, that's how they sell the president. That's very it's very revealing what he's saying, that he's that the the generals are selling the president on the war. Now, is any of it true? Of course it's fucking it's all propaganda, right? Because it's Israel, it's 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 propaganda that's been going on for for a long, long time, right? Way before Trump gets in there, and way after Trump leaves. Actually, I must tell you, I had no idea it was going to be as strong as it was. It totally, the country is is devastated from the standpoint of the economy. But now you see the the thing that I think a lot of people are worried about is that they heard what you said. 2016 and liked it when you said no more stupid wars and then I hear these stories about troops and so I just on. don't want them to have nuclear weapons and all right so he scores points right there I just don't want them to have nuclear weapons that's where he wins right so is there a, is is Trump warmongering well it, it when you threaten people it is when you when you build up troops on their on their border when you send in very sophisticated flying machines uh, uh, over their airspace, you're, you're, you're warmongering. Even economic warfare, if you're sanctioning them, you are warmongering. You're pushing them to the point of civil unrest. Right? So it's all war. What is war? Right? Who, can, who can defend themselves against the American armies today? Or the, you know, the big bombs, bombs that fall from the sky. How do you, you can't fight that if you don't have equal amount of uh, guns, the same type of equipment but the way the new warfare for the people that have nothing their warfare is terrorism they come they get one stupid soul to blow himself up in the middle of a, of a plaza and everybody scares shit right but the united states is war is like we have the weapons to, to annihilate them 
Well, instead, we just starve them out, right? They're doing it in Venezuela. Right? They do it all over the place, right? So it is a form of warmongering when you sanction a country. They can't be threatening us. And, you know, with all of, uh, I just, I just with all of everything that's going on, and I'm not one that believes, you know, I'm not somebody that wants to go into war because war hurts economies, war kills people, most importantly, by far, most importantly. I think that if you look... When I went to North Korea, there All right, now he's going to talk about himself. But anyway, so, so and when I went to North Korea, right? So, so look, is, is, is the United States warmongering with Iran? Are we going to war with Iran, right? You're seeing, you know, the mainstream media, they love this shit, right? They go to war with Iran. Why? Because you can, again, it's, it's, always, it's always OPEC. It's always, it's, it's um, will Iran develop a nuclear weapon? Will Iran be able to defend itself from constant Saudi Arabia and, and constant Israel attack, constant antagoni antagonism? No, they won't be able to because we, because we said so. Now, does, I, uh, does Israel have a nuclear warhead, war, war, nuclear capacity? Yes. Does Saudi Arabia have nuclear capacity? Yes, because we just gave it to them, right? So, I don't know. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look, according to Trump, it doesn't look like uh, like war is imminent. Now, here's the other thing. If, if Trump starts a war with Iran, it's very, very good for his political situation. Why? Because an incumbent president who is who's actively in war with another nation almost always gets reelected. Why? Because people are fearful that only he knows the strategy because he started it and he must stay in office until he finishes it. Right? So if there is a war with Iran or a physical attack of Venezuela, for example, that's a political strategy. You could sum it up as a political strategy for Trump to think historically, statistically, that that could mean a re-election bid. So that, you know, that's, that's usually that's what happened with the... Uh, the young George Bush in 2006, right? 2000, I'm sorry, 2004, right? When Bush got reelected in 2004, he had been, they already started a full-scale war with Iraq. And don't kid yourself, a, a war with Iran would be a disaster, trillion dollars, trillions and trillions of dollars, years and years, so many people dying for no reason whatsoever. Nothing. So, Marcus Conti reporting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.